Chapter Twelve of Mother West Wind Why Stories. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sophia Choi. Mother West Wind Why Stories by Thornton W. Burgess. Chapter Twelve. Why there is a black head in the Buzzard family. Old Mister Buzzard had just told the story of why he has a bald head and is proud of it. You know he hasn't a feather on it, and it is very, very red. It was a very interesting story, and it had been listened to with the closest attention by a lot of the little meadow and forest people. Unc Billy Possum, who is Old Mister Buzzard's particular friend, both having come from way down south, happened along just in time to hear the end of it. May I ask you a question, Brer Buzzard? Said he. Certainly, Brer Possum. Certainly, replied Old Mister Buzzard. Is Buzzard really your family name? Asked Unc Billy. No, Brer Possum. It isn't," replied Old Mister Buzzard. Everybody looked surprised. You see, no one ever had heard him call anything but Buzzard. But no one said anything, and after a minute or two, Old Mister Buzzard explained. "My family name is Vulture," said he. "Yes, sir. My family name is Vulture, but we uns done been called Buzzards so long that." I don't know as I would know I was being spoken to if I was called Mister Vulture. And do I understand all of your family have red heads? Inquired Unc Billy. Old Mister Buzzard looked down at Unc Billy and saw a twinkle in Unc Billy's shrewd little eyes. Old Mister Buzzard grinned. I knows just what you got in your mind, Brer Possum," said he. It's that trifling, no count cousin of mine. He's a buzzard, or a vulture, if you like that better, just like I am. But he belongs to another branch of the family. He has a bald head, just like I have, but his head is black instead of red. That's because his grandpap was trifling and poor trash, just like he is. Peter Rabbit pricked up his ears. This sounded like another story. He was curious about that black-headed cousin of Old Mister Buzzard. Very curious indeed. He wondered if Old Mister Buzzard would have to be teased for a story like Grandfather Frog. Anyway, he would find out. There would be no harm in trying. If you please, how does your cousin happen to have a black head? Asked Peter as politely as he knew how. Because his grandpap asked too many questions," replied Old Mister Buzzard, slyly winking at the others. Everybody laughed, for everybody knows that no one asks more questions than Peter Rabbit. Peter left with the rest, although he looked a wee bit foolish. But he didn't mean to give up just because he was laughing at. Oh my, no! Please, Mister Buzzard, please tell us the story. He begged. Now, Old Mister Buzzard is naturally good-natured and accommodating, and when Peter begged so hard, he just couldn't find it in his heart to refuse. Besides, he rather enjoys telling stories. So he shook his feathers out, half spread his wings to let the air blow under them, looked down at all the little meadow and forest people gathered about the foot of the tall, dead tree. Where he delights to roost, grinned at them in the funniest way, and then began his story. Way back in the days when Grandpa Buzzard had his little falling out with Old King Eagle and done fly so high he scorched the feathers off in his head, he had a cousin, did Grandpa Buzzard, and this cousin was just naturally lazy and no count. Like most no-count people, he used to make a regular nuisance of himself. 
poking his nose into everybody's business and never tending to his own. Wasn't anything going on that this trifling member of the Buzzard family didn't find out about and meddle in? He could ask more questions than Peter Rabbit can, and anybody that can do that has got to ask a lot. Everybody looked at Peter and laughed. Peter made a funny face and laughed too. Seemed like he just went round from morning to night asking questions, continued old Mr. Buzzard, got so that everybody dreaded to see that no Count Buzzard coming, because he bound to pester with questions about things what don't concern him no ways. Now you know that way down in old Virginie where I done come from, my family done got the habit of sitting on the top of chimneys in the winter time to warm their toes. Why, I thought it was warm down south, interrupted Peter Rabbit. So it is, Br'er Rabbit, so it is, old Mr. Buzzard hastened to say. But you'll see old Jack Frost try to come down there sometimes, and he crawled the air off a right smart lot before he turned tail and run back where he belonged. So we uns sit on the chimney tops whenever old Jack Frost gets to strain down where he have no business. You see, if we uns keep our toes warm, we uns are warm all over. One day, this no-count trifling cousin of Grandpa Buzzard get cold in his feet. He looked round right smart for a chimney for to warm his toes, and pretty soon he sees one where he never been before. It was on a little old house, a little old tumble-down house. Mr. Buzzard fly right over and sit on that chimney top for to warm his toes. Of course, he right smart curious about the little old tumble house and who lived there. He hears somebody inside talking to their self, but he can't hear what they say, just a mumbling sound that come up the chimney to him. He listen and listen. Then he shifts round to the other side of the chimney and listen. No matter where he sit, he can't hear what being said down inside the little old tumble-down house. Then what do you think Mr. Buzzard do? Why, he just stretch his full head as far down the chimney as he can and listen and listen. Yes, sir, that is just what that no-count buzzard do. But all he hears is just a mumbling and a mumbling, and that make him more curious than ever. It seemed to him that he must go clean out in his head, lest he hear what going down inside that little old house. Now, when he stretch his head and neck down the chimney that way, he get them all black with soot. But he don't mind that. No, sir, he don't mind that a bit. Fact is, he don't notice it. He's so curious, he don't notice anything, and pretty soon he plum forget where he is and that he is listening where he have no business. He plum forget all about this, and he holler down the chimney. Yes, sir, he holler right down that chimney. Will you all please speak a little louder? He holler down the chimney, just like that. Now the little old woman who lived by herself in that little old tumble-down house hadn't seen that no-count buzzard light on the chimney fall to warm his toes. And when she hear that voice coming right out in the fireplace, she was some flustered and scared was that little old woman. Yes, sir, she surely was plumb scared. She's so scared she tipped over a whole kettle full of soup right in the fire. Of course, that make a terrible mess, and a powerful lot of smoke and hot ashes fly up the chimney. They like to choke that no-count buzzer to death. They burn the feathers off in his head and neck, and the soot made him black, all but his feet and legs and the inside of his wings, which he kept closed. Mr. Buzzard, he give a mighty squawk and fly away. When he get home, he try and try to brush the suit off, but it done get into the skin and it stay there. And from that day, his head and neck stay black, 
and he never speak lesson he spoken to, and then he only grunt. His chillin just like him, and his chillin chillin the same way, and that is the reason that my cousin who lives down south don't have a black head," concluded old Mister Buzzard. A little sigh of satisfaction went round the circle of listeners. As usual, Peter Rabbit was the first to speak. That was a splendid story, Mister Buzzard," said he, "and I'm ever and ever so much obliged to you. It was just as good as one of Grandfather Frog's." Old Mister Buzzard grinned and slowly winked one eye at Unc Billy Possum as he replied, "Thank you, Brer Rabbit. That's quite the nicest thing you could say." But it's true," shouted all together, and then everybody gave three cheers for Old Mister Buzzard before starting off to attend to their own private affairs. End of chapter twelve. Recording by Sophia Choi.